Hi, my name is Brianna. Welcome and welcome back to my channel. I film crochet and hobby content and now book content, I guess. I do what I want. And if you like that kind of content, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Now, in the last video, I talked all about like the books I was reading, like book talk books and all that stuff. And I want to do it again, because why not? Like, I read a lot of books, especially now. And yeah like why not let's talk about them so in july i read six books which is not bad at all um and the first book that i started the month with is fairy bargains of prospect hill by robina miller and i will give this book 3.5 stars this book is about elaine and delphine Elaine is a farmhand. Um, she inherited her grandfather's farm from a fairy. So her fairy, so her grandfather was a random railroad worker and decided to ask a fairy like, hey, can you give me some land? And the fairy was like, sure, why not? So he gets this big old piece of land and then he gets this big old farm that ends up staying in his family for two generations. The second generation is where we start. So Elaine, his granddaughter, is running the the farm while Delphine is actually getting married. And we find out that these two country bumpkin girls are trying to navigate life with those two different positions. The farm is about to go under girl and they don't know what to do to get people to not foreclose the farm. Delphine want to live a big city life, okay? She wants to go out, she wants to go have a good time, and she wants to marry wealthy. And guess what? They're both going to use fairy bargains to help them get this. The fairy realm is very dangerous. If you know anything about spirituality or if you actually believe like fairies exist, um, the fairy realm, fey realm, whatever the case, is actually really dangerous. And whenever you're dealing with any of that stuff, it's really funny because people who don't believe in spirituality or who don't think it's real, like even they get creeped out sometimes. You ever think that that's so interesting? It makes you wonder how they question that it's real or not, but whatever. But the occult, like the Ouija board, like go, like every everything in that kind of realm is dangerous. So you just have to know how to protect yourself. These girls haven't been protecting themselves, child. Like they've been creating fairy rings, trying to see in the fairy realm. They they were just doing too much. They were doing too much, and it eventually catches up to both of them. Um, for Delphine, she asks for what she didn't really want, hundred percent, and for Elaine, like what she wants is gonna come at a price. Um, and so they're both going to kind of, like figure out how to make their lives whole again now that they have got into some mess with the fairies. Now the reason why I give this book 3.5 stars is because I think it was well written. One, um, I finished it. I don't have time for nonsense or patient, uh, like I don't have time for nonsense. And in the last video I think that rings clear. I didn't finish four books because I don't have time for nonsense. So for me, if I finish it, like I at least have to give it like a two or a three. Because there was something about the writing, something about the plot that kept me reading. The only thing that I would have to say about this book is that I think it needs a little bit more. They do a really good job at understanding the family dynamics and relationship dynamics. Like you really do learn to learn love and care about the characters. But me personally, as someone who chooses like not to daydream about this world, I wish they spent way more time in the fairy world and understanding like their side of things. Like I would have loved for half the book to be in the real world and half the book talking about the fairy realm. <clears throat> but that's literally just me. Like I would have given it like a 4 or 4.5 if that was the case. But I think I was like waiting the whole book for them to like meet a fairy, talk to a fairy, go to the fairy realm because we all knew that that's where it was going to end up based on 
they had to fix their problem, so they had to go to the fairy realm anyway. We already knew this literally from the beginning of the book. We already knew that people were going to tell them to stop, and they both weren't going to stop, and that they was going to get snatched up. We already knew half the things, and this is literally not me spoiling because you have to know why and when and who and the different characters, whatever. But I personally feel like they should have spent more time in the fairy realm. So. But overall, I do recommend it. I recommend it. Why not? It's a chill book. It's chill. And it's also kind of cozy too. They have a lot of scenes talking about the fire and like hanging out in the cabin. So yeah. It's a cute book. The next book that I finished in July is All Our Hit Hidden Gifts by Caroline O'Donoghue. I got this book because it was $10. It had tarot cards in the book. I had tarot cards in the book and the description. Maeve Chambers will do almost everything, anything for attention. So when she finds a dusty pack of tarot cards at school, she soaks up the celebrity that comes with giving eerily accurate readings to her classmates. There's one person whose attention she can't capture, though. For her, her former best friend, Lily O'Callaghan, whom she betrayed last year in an act that still makes Maeve cringe. When Lily is finally goaded into sitting for a reading, she selects a card that shouldn't be there at all. Two days later, she disappears. She pulled a card and like she disappears. Consumed by guilt, Maeve teams up with beautiful, sophisticated classmate Fiona and sexy, mysterious Ro, Lily's older sibling, to try to find her lost friend. But as the three combine their unnatural talents to bring Lily back, they must face the dark forces forcing them, forcing the dark forces keeping her trapped before she's lost forever. So this book is really fun. I give it a 4 out of 5 stars. I had a really good time reading it. I was actually traveling and quite anxious when I was reading this book. I was wait. I had a delayed flight and I was like, I want to come home, I want to come home, I want to come home. Um, and I read the whole thing. I read the whole thing. I think I, I finished it in like 4 hours and then when I got home I had like 60 pages left or something like that and I finished that up like really really easy. Like I went through this book and one of the reasons why I went through this book is because you have an adult um the language isn't really complicated like there's no crazy nuances so it's really easy to understand but what I really liked about the book was that she was learning about spirituality and also learning more about herself which is all what spirituality is about learning about yourself so you can help others um so I thought that was pretty cool I think the dynamics between her and her friends were very relatable about wanting to fit in and doing things you don't want to do just so that you could feel accepted. And weirdly enough, this was also a religious book. That was no. Um, they're talking about what's actually happening in Ireland when it comes to being more liberal, I guess, like being more current, like talking more about pro-choice, um, divorce. Uh, being gay, like LGBT community, what does that look like in an Ireland that was so strictly religious for a very long time? And it has dreams and magic and spells and powers. And Maeve is so relatable. You get so angry with her and you feel as though you relate to her. You understand. I think everyone has been in Maeve's shoes where they've done something to a friend that they didn't want to do because they wanted to seem cool. And then she works with her friend. I think the only reason why I didn't give this book a 5 out of 5 stars is because the ending felt rushed, right? So there's a lot of magic in the town that they're in. Like there's a storm and then in the storm, like the river is still warm. I don't know, it's kind of weird, but anyway, you're, you're intrigued, you're like, oh my god, like, it's freezing outside, why is the water warm? Like, why did she put her hand in the water and it comes out bleeding? Like, you're thinking, like, oh my god, like, what's happening? But the ending, like, when it comes to, like, saving her best friend, I feel like that was so rushed. Like, the majority of the book were working to try to save her, 
but then we save her in like I don't know like an hour of the book the timeline of the book I don't know the ending just felt really rushed to me the romance also felt a little rushed towards the end um not every book needs to have romance but we'll talk about that at another time um but yeah so that was all of our hidden gifts and it was really enjoyable to read and I highly recommend so the next book I read I'll keep it short because it's a reread um the time I got drunk and saved a demon if you want to hear about this book like check me in my last video where I did a mid-year reading but I reread the book um I already talked about it in another video um I had a blast rereading it I was in kind of a slump when I came back from my trip. I started a bunch of books and I wasn't feeling any of them. So I said, why don't I reread something that I'm more familiar with? So I just reread that. Let's move on. So the next book I finished is The Very Secret Society of Irregular, which is by Sangu Mandana. I give this book a 5 out of 5 star. And you want to know why I give it a 5? out of five stars is because it has everything that I need in a book. It has a person of color main character. It has a colorful cast of different perspectives and beliefs and backgrounds. It has magic. It has a secret society. It has enemies to lovers. And you, if, I don't know if y'all know I don't mess with romance so that was cool. Michael Moon is the main character of this book. She's a witch online. She's not, and she's not really a witch in real life, or is that what we think? She is a witch in real life, and she belongs to a secret society ruled by Primrose. Now, in this universe, all witches are orphans. They either kill their mother during birth, or their parents are died after they were born. And she decides to moonlight as a witch online because she just has a good time doing that. But, you know, she gets a job opportunity. And someone messages her and is like, hey, since you're a real witch, can you come teach some kids who are also witches? And she's like, so how do you know I'm a witch? One. And number two... Witches aren't supposed to be in the same place, which is why it's the very secret society. Witches are supposed to exist self by themselves. So she goes and talks to him, and then she meets these, like, colorful, bubbly young ladies. One is Asian, black, and I think the other one is South Asian. Please do not quote me on that. And she's like, Dad, like, these girls... They got magic magic. Like, how are you guys surviving with this magic? And then we find out that another witch basically saved these three young witches from dying and put them in a home with a lot of care. So they have like four guardians watching over them. And Micah basically learns to really love these girls and teach them magic, but also teach them love. Now, I am not one for the corniness Y'all know, I'm not one for the nonsense, the corniness, like, but the way that Sangu writes this book, like, you really feel for Micah, and I think I also feel for Micah too, you know, like, not having parents, um, having very strange, like, leadership, you know, who is a parent, who is not, um, am I truly feeling accepted, am I wanted? where I am at and that is so relatable and you watch her struggle with the feelings of I'm not wanted here but I don't care anyway because I'm around the people that I love and if I don't feel wanted is there something within me that's not feeling wanted or is it external and we find out that it was mainly her internal concerns so that was a very irregular society of secret witches the next book that I read was The Winter, The Witch's Printing Pest. Funnily enough, her name is also Micah, and you travel with her as she's running a printing shop in another world, and, excuse me, also running a magic market. Now, she is not from this planet. She's actually from Earth, and she's trying to figure out how to get back 
and that is proving to be very difficult for her and it's a very funny light-hearted comedy novel um there's an issue manga there's an issue in every single like chapter that you have to work through so that's really interesting to watch her do um, but other than that, I gave it a 4 out of 5. It was cute, it was easy, it was light, it was chill, which is exactly what I needed after reading the books that I read. So I thoroughly enjoy it and I recommend A Witch's Printing Press. The last book that I read in July is Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. Do not come for me. Please don't come for me. Please, please, please. Please look up for me. Um, I give it a 3 out of 5. And the reason why I say don't come for me is because this book is so popular everywhere. And I don't understand why. What I like about it, very beautiful scenes, sceneries. Um, Heather Fawcett could be a geography writer she really could like she could go out there and she could slay and she could eat if she was writing about geography because her descriptions and the way she describes things like that for example there was one scene where the aurora was bleeding from the sky and like she puts her fingers in the mix of the blues and the greens and i was like wow that's pretty <laughs> that's cute um but anyway, Emily Wilde is a professor at Cambridge, how studious, the go for it, go her, in the early 1900s, and she is writing her dissertation on the Encyclopedia of Fairies. She goes to a remote land in Scandinavia called La Joss Land, and in this land, she is trying to find more information about fairies to finish her encyclopedia. And you're traveling with her in this village, while Professor Bambleby, her colleague, is also there. He decides to join her even though she doesn't want him there. And they're both very annoying together in the beginning. Like he is rearranging the house saying this is how you live, girl. This is how you dress, girl. Like you need to get it together. I need breakfast. I need to eat. It's hot. I can't chop wood. You expect me to chop wood? Like he's a very stush professor, which was very annoying. And the two of them, you really think, like, why are they even friends? Like, you really think, like, they obviously don't like each other. So I guess it's enemies to lovers. I guess. Whatever. Anyway, what I didn't like about it, it wasn't enough magic for me personally. I would have loved to see more of the fairy realm. Y'all know I love me some fairies. So I would have loved to see more of that. But I didn't get that. Instead, I got people who hate a white woman and <laughs> don't like her and even though she's trying to save them and a romance that also didn't really make sense I'm sorry I'm very practical I'm a very practical person so I'm like y'all I'm trying to finish my PhD <laughs> and she's trying to talk to the like I'm like bro like what is this romance like I'm if I was her, I'd be like, bro, like, leave me alone. I need to finish my book. You already have your accolades. Let me, let me get mine. This is my turn. You know, like, let me do what I have to do without you interfering. And, like, she over there blushing because he called her cute or whatever. I'm like, girl, if you don't finish this paper <laughs> and go back to Cambridge, why don't you finish this paper? And... I would also like to say before I end off this video that when I was reading a lot of books growing up, romance weren't, wasn't really a staple. I think in a lot of the books that you read growing up, like there is a heart-wrenching relationships in a lot of young adult fiction, but for the most part, the romance was very mild. All of the books that I've read literally in this pile has either had romance forced in or romance was a plot of a thing and I think I could understand why more people like to read manga than books because manga doesn't always have romance it also just has other things that are happening in the world and I think that sometimes nowadays with all these books having romance in it it kind of perpetuates a stereotype now I don't think that the people who mainly read romance are bad or wrong or whatever the case is but sometimes I really do think that 
they try to target women by having a romance and not all women love romance and not all romance is targeted towards women even though a big demographic is but I don't need a buy-in for romance to read your book. I don't know if that makes sense because the romance in uh, All Our Hidden Gifts felt very forced and sudden. The romance in Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies felt very rushed and sudden. And Fairy Bargains also had like some type of romance struggle to overcome through. And looking back at literally all the novels that I read this year, they all had romance in them or romance mixed in them it's like a book can't just be fantasy or just be fiction or just be I don't know historical fiction it always has to have some type of romance or relationships and maybe that's just where our society is going like is romance more important to our generation than others I actually don't think it is um, maybe that's why it's being written in books more. This is just me yapping to be honest because I genuinely believe that our parents generation like millennials and gen x's, my, my parents are gen x's, um, they had such a focus on romance. It was only two things, get a job and get married. That's it. That's all you have to do with your life. But now I think as Gen Z is becoming more into its own, it's more of what am I, what do I want to do? What impact am I going to have on this planet? And the books are still have that undertone of romance. So I don't know, maybe it's trying to force society to be more inclined to romance. Maybe it's trying to get more of a buy-in from a female audience. Or maybe it's because we're so focused on work, we want to escape in a romance or a world that doesn't necessarily exist. I don't know, but I do think that not every book needs to have romance. Anyways, a long-winded way of saying, anyway, if you like this video, <laughs> be sure to like this video. Um, once again, my name is Brianna. I film crochet, book, my hobby content, and anything of that nature. And if you like that kind of content, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye.